You know, if you're new to OpenTX, it can be a little daunting trying to figure out how to navigate this radio. And I'm sure it's hard to get help from reviewers because for those of us who've used OpenTX for some period of time, we're just very comfortable with the radio and we bebop around and everything's good. So today I'm going to show you how to do a basic model setup. We're not going to get into any real advanced features at all. I'm just going to show you how to do the bare minimums that I think are necessary to set up a model airplane on an OpenTX radio. There are six things I want to show you how to do today. The first one is we'll add the model. You have to do that in order to do anything else. Number two, we'll go through the basic model setup. Again, I'm going to skip all the advanced or tricky stuff. We're just going to do the basics like timers and your throttle source and switch checks. That's it. Basics. Number three, I'm going to cover dual rates. You could argue that dual rates really aren't necessary in a basic setup, but I think it would be an omission if I didn't include dual rates. So I'm going to go ahead and cover those. Number four, I'm going to show you how to add a switch just in case you have a stabilizer you want to use or you're using flaps or landing gear or something else you need a switch for. And while we're in there, I will show you how to slow down or speed up your servos. Number five, I'll show you how to reverse a servo. So in case you move your aileron and the servo is going the wrong way, I'll show you how to flip that. And number six, I'll show you how to add a throttle lock because I think every airplane should have a throttle lock for safety. All right, let's get started. From the main screen of your radio, on the right hand side you want to press the jog dial and when you do that a pop-up will show up that says model select. So press enter on that. To add a model to your radio press on the jog dial and depending on which model you have selected this pop-up box may have things in a little bit of a different order. You just want to look for the one that says create model. So when you see that press the button again and this brings up what's called the OpenTX Plane Wizard. We're not going to use that today. We're just going to do it by hand. So all you have to do now is press the return button and that exits the wizard and you can see that we've created a new model. In my case, it's model number 57. Don't worry about the number. The radio manages the number for you. You don't need to worry about that. But you can see this model has a little check mark in there. That means that's the active model and the one we'll be working on. Now press the return key and that will bring you back to the main screen. From here on the left hand side this button says model. So you press on the model button and that will bring you into the basic model setup which is point number two. Press on the model name and let's name our plane fast jet. We'll just call it fast jet. So use the jog dial to navigate the characters until you see what you want and then when you see what you want you just press the button again. You know, I hear a lot of talk on these reviews about how this jog wheel skips. I don't have any problem with it. I think you just have to learn, you, you just have to learn to slow down when you're getting where you want to be. H-I-J. There we go. And another little pro tip, if you want a capital letter, just long press on the, on the jog dial and it'll capitalize the letter for you. And if it's capital and you want it to be a small letter, you long press it again and it'll go small. Okay, I've got my airplane named Fast Jet, so I'll hit return. Okay, the next field is model images. I'll cover images in some other video, but there are images on the stock card. Just press on this field and you'll see a list of images you can select. For mine, I'll just pick the leader 480 because I don't have a jet in here. Okay, and what that does, just so you know, is that gives you the picture of your model on the right hand side, which is really good when you're at the field and you want to make sure you select the correct model for the one you're about to fly, it's a good idea to have a picture. I like that. If you want to set up a timer, that's next. You'll notice there's timer one, timer two, and further down there's timer three. We're just going to do one timer today just to keep it simple. You'll see I've got the timer one field highlighted, so I'll just press on the jog dial here and then again, which will let me select the thing that I want to activate my timer. In my case, I want my timer to go on and off if my throttle is on and off. So if my throttle's on, I want my timer on. If my throttle's off, I want my timer off. Once you've got your source selected, slide over to the time field and press the jog dial and then spin the wheel to set the time that you want. The faster you go, the more it'll skip. You see how I just went to four minutes there? Let's say I want my flight time to be, I don't know, seven minutes. So I'll set it for seven. And once I have it where I want it, I'll press the button again. And now we've got a timer set. If you want to name your timer, you can do that here. I'm just going to give it a name, Flight. Now 
The option that says minute call, if you put a check mark in there, what'll happen is the radio will announce the time every minute on the minute. So it'll go six, five, four, three, two, one. There are some other options regarding countdowns that I'm not gonna cover today. If you wanna play around with those on your own, go ahead. The next important thing that I wanna show you is, is the throttle source. Now it may seem obvious to leave that on the stick, that little icon is the stick, but don't do that. What I want you to do is click on this and set it to channel three or whatever channel you put your throttle on. If in my case, I use AETR, so my throttle is always channel three but whatever channel you put your throttle on that's what you want to enter here in my case it's channel three i'll talk about why later but trust me put it on channel three all right next are switch positions so it's really in my opinion very important to set these and this may look a little daunting but don't let it bother you all this is doing is saying hey when you fire up your radio where do you want your switches to be and right now you can see the configuration says all switches should be up well, if that's the way you want your radio, great. That's, that's, that's great. For this example, we'll assume that's not how we want this model to work. We'll assume that there are some switches on this particular model that we want to be down. And I'll give you one example of what that might be. In the models where I use a flight stabilizer, I put the flight stabilizer on this switch. This is my SC switch. And I use down for off, middle for wind rejection, and on for acro mode. When I load up a model that's got a stabilizer in it, I want this switch in the down position. And let's say you've got a throttle cut enabled on this switch and throttle safe is toward you and throttle active is away from you. For our example then, we have our stabilizer switch down and our throttle cut toward us. All you have to do now is highlight the row of buttons and when you long press it, you'll see that the C switch and the F switch both move down to the down position. You can see the C switch now has an arrow pointing down and the F switch now has an arrow pointing down. If I move those switches so they're not down and then I turn off the radio and restart it. Switch warning. You see the switch warning that I get SC and SF. It's complaining that SC is not down and SF is not down. So I'll put SC down and that warning went away and then I'll put SF down and that warning went away. Now if I turn the radio on and off again and leave those switches alone, those warnings should be gone. Okay, that's it for switch positions. The next thing we're going to do is look at binding, and I'm going to show you how to turn on the internal RF module. That's the multi-module in the Jumper T18. So notice the mode for internal RF says off. If we highlight that field and press the jog dial and move to the right, you can see the multi is populated and I've got options right here for the protocol I want to use. Because there are so many different protocols supported by the multi-module, I'm not going to cover those here. You'll have to read your own specific instructions for the receiver you're trying to bind, but this is where you turn that module on and instigate the binding process. You see there's an option right there to bind. You press that and it'll start binding depending on the protocol you selected. Okay, so far we've created our model and we've done a basic model setup. Now let's take a look at dual rates. Notice up top here these icons. I always liken those to tabs in a browser. You can navigate these icons by pressing the page button. And if you long press the page button, it goes the other direction. Now on the input screen, I'm gonna show you how to add dual rates, but I'm only gonna do it for one surface because once you see it for one, you just replicate it for the other surfaces that you wanna add dual rates for, like your rudder and your elevator. So I'm just gonna add mine to the ailerons, and you can see I've got a weight of 100%, which means when I move my stick 100%, that output is fed through the mixer and to the output screen at 100% as well. So no modification on the input screen from default. All right, I've got my cursor on the aileron line. I'm gonna press the jog dial and I'm gonna select insert after and then come down and set your weight to something lower. We'll just say we want the weight to be 70%. And if you wanna add expo, you can do that here. Just click on this field and spin the dial and add in some expo. Okay, the next part's just a little bit tricky, but I'm gonna take a minute to explain it. 
this radio has a lot of three position switches and because I'm going to use a three position switch for my rates but I only want to have two rates I want to have high and low we have to deal with that third position because you don't want to leave that unaccounted for if I set up my low rates to be on the down position of the switch and my high rates to be on the up position of the switch what happens if I accidentally put the switch in the middle so in order to deal with that we're going to set one to be up and the other one to be not up which means either middle or down and the way we're going to do that is by selecting on the switch field we'll press the jog dial and we're going to move the switch and you notice i've got sb up but i want this to be not sb up so i'm going to move the dial until i get to the other side and you can see that exclamation right there means not sb up so that means when the switch is in any position but up then this rate is active now I'll hit return and I'm going to select the original input which is 100% and edit that and I'm going to add some expo just so you can see the expo differences we'll just do 5% expo and then for this switch this will be SB up okay take a look at what we've got on the screen my SB switch is in the up position and this line on the inputs is highlighted bold and it says SB up so I've got a weight of 100% and an expo of 5%. When I move this switch out of the up position, this second entry will activate. Even though the switch is in the middle position, this line says when SBC is anything but up, activate. Now if I move it to the down position, same thing, it's still highlighted. The idea is to capture and deal with that middle stick position because we have so many three position switches on the radio. We just don't want to leave it to chance that we could have some switch configuration that would leave no input set, which is bad. That would crash the plane. All right, remember, if you want to add dual rates to your rudder and elevator, you just follow the same process. Same thing. Okay, that covers dual rates. Let's move on to adding a switch. To add a switch, we're going to look at the mixer tab, and let's say for argument's sake that we want our switch to be on channel 6, just, just for argument's sake. Move the cursor down to channel 6, press on the jog dial, and under mix name, we'll call it STAB, we'll just, or STA. We only get three fields to work with, so we'll just call it STA. S T A. And for source, when you highlight the field and press the jog dial, all you have to do is move the switch that you want to be in that position. So for source, I want my SC switch to be the source. So all I do is move the SC switch and notice that it's now populated in that field. Hit return and return, and that's it. Now I've got a three position switch enabled on channel six. And let me show you how that will manifest itself. If you look here on the channel monitor, at channel 6, my switch is in the middle position right now. If I move it down, we've got full deflection. And if I move it up, I've got full deflection the other way at 90, 988. And in the middle, it's 1500. So that's how you add a switch. It's that simple. Let's say that switch controls your flaps and you want those flaps to move slowly when you deploy them. There's a field over here on the right where you can say slow up and slow down. So if I go down to the slow down field and press enter, I can set a time that delays the servo travel. If I want to do the, if I want to slow them on the way up, I can do that here. And if I want to delay them up or down, here's one example. Let's say you, when you deploy your flaps, you've got to get right on your elevator. So after you deploy flaps, you, wanna, you want the model to just delay for a second while you get your fingers back situated on your elevator because I've got it on SC, which is directly above my elevator switch. So we'll go ahead and put a delay in that says, for down, let's delay for two seconds. Now what will happen when I activate, let's do it. Let's do it. I'll move the SC switch to the up position and watch what happens. After you hear the click, it'll wait about two seconds before you see the output, which is in red, change watch, watch what happens here we go click now movement you see that so that's how you add a delay if you want one all right we're rounding third and heading for home we only have two things left we're going to reverse the servo and we're going to set a throttle lock on this field i've got channels one two three and four i don't know why they're not names but they're not you don't and they don't really need to be as long as you know what they are so in this case i've got my aileron on channel four when i come down to the output screen 
channel 4 is my aileron. If I move my aileron stick to the right, notice how the output moves to the right. Now if that's not correct for your model, you go to the output screen, press enter on the line that you need to change, and come all the way over here to this little arrow right there. When you press that, it reverses the servo direction. So now when I return out of there and hit my channel monitor again, I move the stick to the right and look at the output. It's going to the left. So the mix still shows it going to the right. My thumb is still going right, but the output's been reversed. It's going the other way. If you want to undo that, you simply click on that field again, go back to that arrow, press it. That undoes what you just did. Hit the channel monitor again, and you can look and see that now they're both on the same side of the line again. Okay, that's how you reverse a servo. The last thing we need to do is set up a throttle lock. We'll do that in special functions. Under special function one, SF1, simply going to click on the first field, and I want my throttle lock to be my SF switch up here. So SF down, or SF to me, is the lock. And you can see that it's already set to override a channel. We just need it to be on channel three. Now, if you remember earlier in the video under throttle source, this is why we're selecting channel three. Because when you select channel three as your throttle source, your timer activates when channel three activates. So if you use the stick input alone, then the timer will activate anytime you move the stick up and down. It doesn't matter. But by setting channel three as the throttle source, the timer will only activate when three is allowed to be active. Meaning, if you have a throttle cut enabled, you can move the stick all you want and won't start your timer. It will only start the timer when your throttle cut is disabled because then channel three is active. Okay, so override channel three, and we need to set a value of negative 100. Remember, when it comes to weights, you have negative 100, zero, and 100. Negative 100 is all the way off. Zero is 50%. The first time I ever did this, I set it at zero, and I thought my throttle safety worked. I plugged in a motor, and it tried to take off on me. You gotta make sure you set it to negative 100. And then finally, you put a little check in this box right here, and that tells the radio you want that to be active. Now let's take a look at our channel monitor and we'll see what happens. Remember my throttle is on channel three, which is right here. And notice we're at full deflection. Our mixer and output are both negative values, negative 99. Now I'm gonna move my throttle stick up and notice that the mixer says, hey, we're moving, right? The mixer thinks we're moving because the way the flow of information works is from input to mixer to output. We're overriding channel three's output. So the mixer still thinks we're going, but the, the special function is overridden channel three on the output. And that's why this is still at zero. Also notice this little black icon that indicates that this channel is being overwritten by a special function. Now, if I turn my throttle lock off and move that SF switch forward, there we go. The throttle advances to full. Okay. And it works the way you'd expect it to. If I activate my throttle kill, there we go. Channel is overridden and my throttle is set to negative 100. Well, there you go. That's a very basic model setup for a Jumper T18. Hey, I have to ask, if you're not a subscriber of the channel and you keep coming back, please consider hitting that subscription button. It really does matter for small channels like mine to gain position on videos that we post. It helps. For those of you who are already subscribed to the channel, you know I appreciate you guys. Keep those comments coming. Keep the thumbs up coming. If you didn't like the video, give me a thumbs down and tell me why. Don't forget to hit my Amazon and Banggood affiliate links in the description. If you use those, it helps the channel get a little bit of a kickback. So if you shop at Amazon or Banggood regularly, I've got a couple links in there that you can use that'll help the channel get a little bit of a referral commission from those two sites if you use them. That's all I've got for today, guys. Take it easy.